once again, champs. Account progression, blue diamond spending for post T4. Part two is going to be looking at badges, which has always been a solid uh, way of investing blue diamonds for stat increase. So as with part one, just a quick preface, like we are mainly focused on stat progression, which is why badges is such a major option. And we're also in, you know, trying to cover what it costs you to get that return on investment so that you can decide where to place it in the tier of priorities. So massive spending preface with this one. If you've gone ahead and grabbed stuff like Royal Badge Packs and you've eliminated some of the need for normal, di uh, normal badges, then of course this is going to be of less importance to you. But I don't feel like a lot of people have uh, gone so far out and gotten so many of them that they're not going to be needing normal badges as a whole, especially if you've unlocked the fourth badge slot through research. So the investment explanation, basically you've got a few different options. You obviously start at common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Each of those gives a percentage increase to the base stat of the troop that it's in relation to. So something that I think people may not look at enough when deciding what badges to use and which to push is which is actually gonna give you the greatest base stat increase. So if you look at say T4 infantry, when you take a look at um, the increase to health, they're going to pick 24.25 up from a legendary badge. Whereas if you compare that to Cav, they're only going to pick up uh, 21.5, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but it's still something to keep in mind when planning your um, action, you know, like what to focus on when, what to push or what to choose when you get two options in between. So from there, we look at how we get these badges. So badge chests is the most straightforward way. There's three different badge types, uh, three, three different badge chest types. Um, and this is another thing that I think is missed by some. The rarity that you get from the chest is determined by the chest rarity itself. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the legendary chests are the best return on investment. So each chest type costs a different amount. If we go over into the diamond shop here, you can see that the legendary badge chest, 6,000 blues per. The rare is only 3,000, and the epic comes in the middle at six. Now, the trick to it is that the rare badge chest here gives you common to rare possibilities. The legendary, common to legendary possibilities, which is great, but in actuality, the epic badge chest gives you uncommon so if I grab one of those and open it up, you see there I've got a green at, uh, infantry attack badge. If I'd picked either of the other two, I quite possibly could have ended up with a gray. So while you're missing out on the opportunity for a legendary, and while it's a little bit more expensive than the um, uncommon chest, it's still a better guarantee for return on investment because it limits the possibilities that are coming out of that chest. So in each chest, you pretty much have a one in 15 chance of the type and then dependent on the rarity of the chest, that grows exponentially because if you've got a one in 15 chance, but you've also got a chance of five different rarities, then that, you know, gets multiplied. So for me personally, I always, where possible, go for epic badge chests. Now, of course, you're going to pick them up from other means, and that's not a bad thing if, you know, they're still going to give badges, so you're not going to complain about that. But if you're buying them with blue diamonds directly, I'd definitely stick with the epics. So the next option is the Westerosi Navigator ship. Um, best option here is saving 200,000 blue diamonds and purchasing a thousand navigator passes. And that basically ensures that you're gonna get through the legendary run 10 times, regardless of how many free uh, movements you get or how many times you hit the diamond cave. Now, by doing that also, you pick up the milestone rewards, which ensures something like four or five legendary badge chests, which is a nice bonus. Since you're gonna be spending the diamonds anyway, you may as well maximize that return. So the point of doing so is each time you do the legendary, you get about 500 Tyrosh coins. And for those coins, you can directly purchase uh, two gray badges of your choosing from the options that are available in the store. Now, 
the cost for upgrade goes up exponentially also. You can see by this little uh, chart here that 75% of the cost in upgrade is going from epic to legendary. So it's pretty substantial. So I'll just jump over here. I don't have that many, so I will probably stick with a normal run just to illustrate the point. Uh, legendary is the preferred option, but just to show you what I'm talking about. So on the normal run, you get 50 per, so you'd have to do five runs to get a badge out of the shop. It's still an option, especially if you're a smaller account and you just want to pick up some other goodies along the way or burn some compasses that you've selected. As you can see, each movement you make, you get some return. And that does come into play, or it should come into play when you're making your decision. Because Navigator therefore means it's giving you not only the guaranteed badges, but it's also giving you other things that are gonna help progress your account in other ways. So whether that be, you know, gear or um, gear materials, or motivation and things like this. So you've got the Tyros shop here. You can see the infantry, cavalry, spear, attack badges, all common. There's a few other options, but obviously most people, as they should be, are focused on attack. I'll pick up gray infantry since we're on a bit of an infantry kick with that uncommon before. And I'll just burn out those. Now, if you do hit the diamond cave, uh, which I didn't write there, but that's a legendary run with the 500 points. So two more infantry greys and a couple of milestones achieved just to show you what we're talking about here. Each time, each level, a few different goodies, including badge chests. So my calculations for the navigator are sort of worst case scenario. They don't account for free spins since they're not guaranteed and at what rate they're guaranteed, you know, what rate you're gonna get them is totally varied. Sometimes you'll do it and you just won't get many at all and other times you'll get runs of up to 30. So it's just something that you can't account for directly in the, um, in the calculations, nor is this jackpot here. So each time you do the run, you have a chance of getting to the diamond cave. Just because you get to the diamond cave doesn't mean you're gonna get the jackpot. If you do, it may not be the full amount shown in the jackpot amount. So again, it's something to be considered by doing this method rather than the batch chests. You do potentially have the chance of cashing out, you know, sometimes up to eight or nine million blue diamonds, which then can be reinvested for greater return. So that's a basic idea. Um, both options are feasible. Both options are, you know, not bad options. It sort of comes down to whether you prefer a guarantee or whether you're willing to do the RNG. If you are looking at investing through the ship, then the cost is at worst case, as shown here. So for nothing to common, for one, you're going from zero badges to one common required. So you can see that the number of runs required is 0 0.05. So really what you want to look at is where you're at, where you're wanting to get to, and how much that's going to cost you. So you can decide whether there are better options um, as far as stat return goes. So for me personally, I'm at Epic and I'd be moving to Legendary, which means to get a total Epic to total Legendary full set, is gonna take about 76.8 runs. Now, of course, as said, this is worst case. Maybe it is reasonably or significantly less than that, but I don't see it being so significant that it's gonna be, you know, much different in my way of thinking for my decision-making. If I was looking at just a singular epic to legendary at 9.6 runs, you may wanna consider the free runs, knock off the 0.6, if you hit the diamond cave a few, no, you know, even at one time per run or two times per run, then maybe it will bring it down to, you know, seven or eight runs. But seven or eight runs is still, uh, say seven, it's still 1.4 million to get an upgrade from Epic to Legendary. So I'd say anything prior to the Epic to Legendary 
is a pretty good investment. But anything after that, I think you really got to have a good think about before going ahead with. It is a nice return, but it may not be the best, especially with Awakening now, which is what we'll be discussing in part three. There is other options available, and they're pretty good ones. All right, guys, I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.